and then when she won the medal, I remember there was a lot of folks in the control room from Puerto Rico, and this was the first gold medal ever. While you're watching something, saying, "Man, this was this is really special." Los Olímpicos no son solamente para los atletas que compiten, que el deporte realmente tiene la capacidad de unir. To not forget why you started and to remember the little girl that was inspired by another Olympian or another athlete that made you want to go after that dream. Come back to that little girl. Welcome to the Backstage con Telemundo podcast, where you will hear from all of our stars in front of and behind the camera. On what it's like to work for the epicenter of the Hispanic media world and how we bring that juego Goal! and juego to all screens. Ahora sí, vámonos backstage con Telemundo. El sueño olímpico ya casi está aquí. Get ready to go for the gold this summer as the Paris Olympics come to Telemundo, Universo, and Peacock in Español, July 24th to August 11th, showcasing the dreams and inspiring stories of the most talented athletes around the world. And to take us on the road to Paris, today we're joined by Team USA artistic swimmer and Olympian Daniela Ramirez, SVP of sports content Roberto Pardo, and Olympian and network soccer analyst Isabela Echeverri. Daniela, Roberto, Isabela, bienvenidos. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I can't be any more excited to be here. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, happy to be here. Can't wait for the Olympics. Hola, Ashley. Qué felicidad estar aquí. I'm really happy. Y esperemos que sea un gran podcast. Definitivamente. Well, super excited to have you all here to talk about the biggest multi-sport event in the world. And with that, Daniela, let's start with talking about the games, shall we? So you're only days away from competing in your first ever Olympics, representing Team USA as the proud Latina you are in artistic swimming. But I got to ask, was this always a dream? How does it feel to be an Olympian? It feels amazing to be an Olympian now. I feel like I've been dreaming about this moment for a long time. I've tried to get to it for a long time. And at first it was a struggle. I didn't make my first Olympic team. So to now be on this Olympic team four years later, it feels amazing. And to do it as, um, as a Venezuelan, as a, as a daughter of an immigrant family, it feels even more amazing to be doing it for Team USA and pretty crazy. The <laughs> moment that it was over, I was crying and I was crying and I want to cry now because I accomplished my dreams. Absolutely. And I understand this is also a family tradition, right? That comes a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. My mom inspired me because she was my coach growing up and she did artistic swimming back when it was called synchronized swimming. And my sister also inspired me a lot. And I, you know, younger sisters always want to be like their older sister. So I always wanted to be just like her. So when I saw that she was doing artistic swimming too, I was like, I guess I gotta, I gotta copy it. And it just took me and, and did all these things for me and provided me with so many opportunities in life. So I'm forever grateful for that. And the family tradition definitely paid off. That's for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Daniela, now that you've officially reached Olympic status, you're also part of the team that brought USA back into the games and artistic swimming since we last qualified in 2008. I assume that there is a lot of excitement, but also a lot of pressure that comes with this. So uh, curious to know, talk to us about a typical day in training. How are you preparing for the Paris Olympics? Yeah, so... It's actually been a very, very long time since the U.S. had a team qualify, and growing up, I didn't have a team to look up to, so we kind of had to set the standard. Um, so we wake up around 5 in the morning, and we start practice at 5.30 to 6. Um, we do CrossFit training for about an hour and a half before we head to the pool, and we're in the pool for about six hours-ish, and we end around 2.30. Wow, that's intense. Yeah. And how is it like in performance days? What's that training like or process? Performance days are a lot different. We wake up usually a lot later. There is uh, training blocks for each team, so we go to our training block, um, and then we'll usually come back to the hotel or wherever we're staying, a village or something, and do our hair with Knox Skeleton. You probably see me on TikTok doing yes, all these Knox Skeleton things, but it's the same thing that you use for to, to make jello and things like that. So we'll do that. It takes about an hour to do with all the headpiece and get prepped, and then once we get to the pool, um, we'll spend about two hours or so getting prepped and, re and warm up and then we'll be ready to go. Wow. 
That sounds like definitely a process. And I want to ask you the million dollar question we all have, because every time as spectators, you know, we watch synchronized swimming and we're always in awe. How does an artistic swimmer manage to not drown as you're doing all of these dance routines and all of these flips underwater? What's the secret? Um, well, I actually have a joke that I call it pretty drowning. So we're beautifully drowning <laughs> and we just make it look pretty. So in in all reality, we are kind of drowning, but, um, yeah, I mean, you start out with swimming. I, I, uh, I don't know what to tell you because to be honest, it does feel a lot like drowning where it's, it's really scary to get out there and not be able to breathe and, and to be kind of underwater for really long periods of time, but you get used to it. You, your body gets fit and oxygen levels get depleted, but we deal with what we can. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. It really looks magical out there. So great job with that. And t total respect for all the training you put into that. Thank you. Absolutely. And Isa, let's go with you now. So you're a famed soccer player who has participated in the Summer Olympics as well back in 2016, as well as the FIFA World Cup. Do you have any athlete to athlete advice for Daniela? Claro que sí. Primero quiero felicitar a Daniela por hacer el equipo, por oficialmente ser parte de los Juegos Olímpicos. And my one advice for you, Dani, would be to enjoy it. Muchas veces cuando estamos en la competencia, cuando estamos allá adentro, estamos tan enfocados en la prueba, estamos tan enfocados en ganar que se nos olvida estar presentes en ese momento y disfrutar de lo que son unos Juegos Olímpicos. Claro que hay que ir por el oro, claro que hay que querer ganar siempre, pero yo te invito a que cada mañana te tomes 5 o 10 minutos, medites un poco y digas, wow, estoy aquí, lo logré y lo quiero disfrutar, porque es algo que a mí me faltó y que me hubiera gustado que alguien me hubiera dicho en su momento. Oh, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, Isa. Muy bellas palabras, Isa, y muchas gracias por mencionar eso, porque me imagino que es fácil como atleta enfocarse en ganar un torneo por el cual has trabajado tanto con entrenamiento físico, pero es esa preparación mental de gozártelo, de dar lo mejor de ti, lo que verdaderamente es importante. Sí, Ashley, muchas, muchas veces vivimos en automático y se nos olvida disfrutar de lo que hacemos y entender dónde estamos. Así que espero que, que lo logres. Total. And Isa, now that you're officially off the pitch and in the studio as a network analyst, uh, talk to us a little bit about how you're preparing for the role. Bueno, es, es muy diferente al fútbol. Eh, mi relación con el fútbol terminó hace, hace un año y medio y es como si hubiera terminado con un, con un ex, con una ex pareja. <laughs> eh, realmente, realmente no ha sido un camino fácil. Pero ahora que, que trabajo con, con Telemundo, que estoy de analista, se, se me asemeja mucho a lo que es la competencia, a lo que era mi día a día como futbolista y es lo que más me gusta de mi trabajo. El himno es probablemente el momento más emotivo y más importante para mí dentro de un campo de fútbol. ¿Por qué? Porque... You are preparing for the game for a week. You need to know every single aspect of the game. And then the weekend comes, game day comes, and first you have to prepare for it. So it, before it was dancing on the dressing room and having fun with my friends and my teammates and being like really concentrated on the game. But now it's makeup and now it's getting dressed. Y después llego al estudio y es como llegar a la cancha. You are on the spotlights, the lights are on you, and you have to perform because, because it is a live event. Tienes que dar lo mejor de ti y no te puedes equivocar. Lo mismo que me pasaba en una cancha de fútbol. Y luego se acaba el partido, and, and you go home, you have a nice dinner, a nice hour, y te preparas para el próximo, y cada fin de semana tienes una revancha. Así que eso es lo que más disfruto de mi trabajo, y así me preparo, como, me, como lo hacía cuando era... Una futbolista profesional. Sí, definitivamente. And, you know, I've always said covering a multi-sport event and so many different athletes, I mean, that alone deserves its own Olympic medal. Este, <laughs> porque hay tantos deportes y, y, y tienes que saber de todo, un poco, para poder cubrirlo este, a la perfección, lo más que se pueda. 
Sí, tienes que prepararte mucho. Definitivamente. And speaking of that, Roberto, let's take it behind the scenes with this next one. So Telemundo has been covering the Olympics in Spanish uh, for our Latino audiences for more than 20 years now. But we understand that this year is going to be special because we will be having our most extensive coverage ever. So what has this meant for you from a production and content perspective? Sure. Look, what the Olympics mean to, to me, it, it's being part of one of the most unique sporting events of uh, in the world, right? Every four years, capturing these events, bringing these stories to life is really become something special. You get to meet a lot of athletes, spend time with them before they compete, before they kind of hit that limelight or that Olympic stage. And you really get a, a perspective as to how their life is, what this journey has entailed, and how really appreciate how hard it is to, to make it to an Olympics. You know, as a producer, to be part of the team that, that brings these events to U.S. Hispanic audiences on, on Telemundo is, is a huge honor and a responsibility. The, the Olympics are such a large event, and to witness these moments and, and the drama around the Games, it just really means a lot for me and my colleagues. And how much crew does it take to pull off this magnitude of an event? Well, we'll be broadcasting over 315 hours uh, across Telemundo and Universo and all streaming on Peacock. We're going to have a lot of Olympic soccer coverage and, and more live events than ever before. Like Production will be based in at Telemundo Center. We'll have two studios, one being virtual, and a whole host of control rooms editing and, and other feeds coming in. From a people standpoint, it's about 200 people, and 30 of them are in Paris during the Games. We'll also have our soccer team led by Andres Cantor, Manuel Sol, and Natalia Traín. We'll have five reporters on the ground in, in Paris and, and across France. Um, and on July 26, Miguel Gerwitz and Jessica Carrillo, they're going to call the opening ceremony uh, live on Telemundo, which is uh, a new experience for, for all of us. On, on the talent side, we have over 30 talent joining us for, for the Paris Olympics, and wow. including seven uh, Olympic experts that have either medaled or participated um, throughout um, our time uh, broadcasting the Olympics. So it's it's a quite a big team. Wow. And I'm assuming that clearly when you're covering more than 315 hours of live competitions, daily recap specials as well, there's a lot of prep work and teamwork that comes with that. But I also imagine there are a lot of challenges. So I want to talk about that next. What has been your biggest challenge thus far preparing for the Paris Olympics? Sure. I mean, each Olympics, it's, it's different with, with their own challenges and, and also their own opportunities. And in Tokyo, for example, we were in the middle of COVID, and that had an impact on the games and what we were able to do there. In Paris, I think the world um, is ready to celebrate this together. It's a very unifying event. Uh, the athletes could have families in the stands, which wasn't something that the athletes could do. So here you are in the middle of the biggest moment of your of your athletic life, and, and, and one of the most important things in, in your own life is not there to, to celebrate it. So that's a that's a big difference compared to to four years ago um and the host city itself it becomes alive with excitement the i've been in sydney and in other olympic uh cities and 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 the the, the excitement and the energy uh being there for that event is just spectacular so we hope to transmit that and bring that to our audiences here in the united states um an actual challenge you know because it's more hours and more lives and and a lot of these events run concurrently we have to keep an eye on on all on many events at the same time right to provide our audiences with the most updated news and and to capture those moments bring them to them while while they're happening um or present them in the recap show just so our audiences don't miss out on on these magic moments um you know uh and lastly the opening ceremonies which is uh, on the River Seine, it's not in a classic stadium. The organizers are going to have barges that go along the River Seine into uh, a temporary stadium where, where you see all the, the normal protocol and, and the anthem and the speeches and, 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 the, and the athletes parade and obviously the, the lighting of the cauldron. So that's going to be a very different uh, type of opening ceremonies, and we're really happy and excited to to bring it to um, to Telemundo on uh, July 26. 
Impressive. Well, can't wait to see that. And Daniela, Isa, uh, want to go with you now. So on the topic of challenges, curious to know what has been the biggest challenge you've both had to face as Olympians from your unique perspectives. Yeah, um, I feel like for me, it's been moving across the country. Um, I am from Miami, um, but I live in California right now in, in the L.A. area, and I've lived here for about five and a half to six years. Lo más difícil fue estar sin mi familia y estar entrenando sola. Yo estaba muy chiquita y yo no sabía nada del, del mundo. Um, and it's been really hard. I moved when I was 15 and that was really hard for me to let go of being a normal teenager, being a normal kid and like getting to experience all the things that the normal people do. Um, to then just be an athlete first and a student second, it was really tough for me to be able to balance that. And going into college, it also got much harder. So that's been a big challenge for me. Right. Well, and I can even imagine, you know, us as Latinos, too, being away from family must be very tough, especially since somos una gente tan unida. So that must be you really must love something when you make that as a sacrifice, for sure, too. Yeah, I'd agree tenfold, a millionfold. <laughs> uh, Isa, what about you? Yo estoy de acuerdo con, con Daniela. Una de las cosas más difíciles es irse y estar lejos de la familia. Yo viví en cinco países diferentes mientras era futbolista y, y fue complicado. Pero I think the biggest challenge for me has been injuries. Um, como atleta estás llevando tu cuerpo al límite todo el día, todos los días. Al final el cuerpo es tu instrumento de trabajo y cuando lo llevas al límite todo el tiempo, pues suelen haber lesiones. Para mí fueron, fueron lesiones en los pies que me enseñaron muchas cosas de la vida y fue la parte más complicada de, de ser un atleta porque me hizo realmente trabajar en cosas que nunca pensé que iba a trabajar, como en la parte mental, como en la nutrición, como en la meditación, como en el estiramiento que muchas veces pensamos que no son tan importantes, pero son una de las claves para el alto rendimiento. Y sí, las lesiones realmente, it was, it was really, really hard on me, both physically and mentally. ¿Y en algún momento pensaste rendirte en ese proceso? Sí, la verdad que tuve varios momentos eh, de mi carrera que dije, ok, I'm done, I'm not going to keep doing it, pero seguí, seguí, seguí hasta que hasta que más pude. Me recuperé de unas lesiones que hasta los médicos me decían que, que no me podía recuperar. Wow. Pero la verdad es que hoy por hoy eh, mi cuerpo, estoy sufriendo las consecuencias de todo lo que llevé mi cuerpo al límite. Hoy por hoy, la verdad, llevo un año y medio retirada del, del fútbol profesional y cada vez que juego fútbol o que intento jugar fútbol, mis pies no pueden y me queda quedo con dolor una o dos semanas después. Entonces, to todavía siento las lo, la consecuencia de mis decisiones como futbolista, but I don't regret it. No, y gracias por compartir ese espíritu olímpico, vamos a llamarlo así, porque es este creo que es importante también y es bonito que la gente entienda todo el sacrificio por lo que tiene que pasar un atleta para cumplir su sueño. Y bueno, ya que hablamos un poco sobre los retos, Roberto, ahora hablemos sobre cosas un poco más alegres. Este, Roberto, you've been working here at Telemundo for the past 25 years, which means you've covered every single Olympics ever since we acquired the rights in Spanish. And I'm sure there's many memories that have come with that. Uh, but talk to us about your favorite production memory of all time working in Olympics. Well, you know, one of one of the, one of the things that, that a lot of people don't know is, you know, you're working at the Olympics and, and you might be in a control room or, or in a, at, at one of your workstations, but but you're also watching it, you know, as a fan and, and you get caught up with with uh, with what's happening. Right. So, I, you know, on the soccer side, when Mexico won their their gold medal over Brazil in, in, in London, um, it, it was something that. Um, we knew it could happen because it was a very strong team, but to actually see it happen was was one of those things that that was amazing. And then four years later in, in Rio, Brazil winning their gold medal um, in Maracanã Stadium, um, which was like the only trophy that that team has, was missing. And to do it in a home crowd, it was a spectacular, dramatic moment. But one of the things that I remember as a, as a team that we couldn't... Uh, we really got excited about it. was in in also in Rio, um, Puerto Rico's 
Monica Puig, she, she's a tennis player. She ended up winning um, the gold medal, um, and she was an unseated player. So th there wasn't a, a big expectation. Yes, she had made it, but winning the gold medal, little by little, day by day, we started to see, like, okay, she won this game, she won the next game. Hey, sh she might have a shot. So we started to move things around to, to make sure we covered it uh, live. And, and, and when she won the medal, I remember there was a lot of uh, folks in the control room from Puerto Rico. And this was not just like the first um, gold medal in tennis. This was the first gold medal ever. Afuera, señoras y señores, medalla de oro para Puerto Rico. And when the anthem was playing, there was a lot of, you know, emotion from, from a lot of the people while, while they're trying to work and things like that. It's just one of those things that I remember from production side while you're watching something saying, man, this was, this is really special. Absolutely. And, you know, as you were sharing your story, all I could think about was how inspirational it is that you get to be part of that story. Absolutely. You know? um, and I think that's one of the most inspiring things is that you're all living an Olympic dream in your own respective ways, whether it's competing in the games, uh, being a trusted voice in commentary, or even deciding how to cover the games we're all going to be watching this summer. So my question to each of you is, what is your message to everyone in search of an Olympic dream? Roberto, you want to go first? Sure. I mean, um, like you said, I've been producing it since since our first Olympics in, in 2004, and you learn a lot along the way, right? There's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of building on on what works from from a production standpoint, from a technology standpoint, and and we're always looking for those opportunities to improve the presentation and, and our coverage. You know, the common denominator across all Olympics is, you know, you have to have passion for for what you do, um, even as applied to to the Olympic Games. You need a lot of support, whether that is management, the company, and you, and your teammates, and and like I said, a lot of teamwork to succeed. This is not an easy task. There's, there's, there's a lot of facets to bringing on a presentation um, that, that, you know, might seem, might get overlooked in, in the day to day or uh, folks think this is a sports production, but there's a lot of, of, uh, of people across the company. Right. And um, I just wanted to thank um, the team at Tele <laughs> Telemundo Deportes and across the company for, for all their efforts. You know, it's unbelievable the amount of work that's gone into all the athlete profiles, setting up how this is going to work. And, and we're very fortunate to get to execute on the production, um, but it's a lot of effort, hard work as we get near the, the start of the game. So um, uh, a gold medal shout out uh, to, <laughs> to the team uh, at, at Deportes and, and across Telemundo. So. Absolutely. Beautifully said. Uh, Isa, cuéntanos tú, ¿cuál es tu mensaje para todos en busca del sueño olímpico? Mi mensaje para todos en busca del sueño olímpico sería que se la gocen, que el, los olímpicos no son solamente para los atletas que compiten, que el deporte realmente tiene la capacidad de unir, de unirnos como sociedad, de unirnos como latinos, de unirnos como Telemundo, como Telemundo Deportes, y que no dejemos de encontrarle la magia al deporte y que no dejemos que, que se pierda ese espíritu olímpico porque realmente es lo más alto a donde puede llegar un deportista y lo más alto que podemos ver en, en televisión o por redes o por donde sea porque son los mejores atletas del mundo compitiendo por una medalla. Así que yo, yo invitaría a todos a que se lo gocen, a que lo vean, a que lo disfruten, a que aprendan mucho de los deportistas, a que sepan las historias que hay detrás del humano, no solamente del deportista que gana la medalla de oro, sino también del humano que existe detrás de esa persona que ha trabajado tanto tiempo por that Olympic gold o just for that Olympic appearance. Entonces, ese, ese sería mi mensaje. Y, y de acuerdo con Roberto, shout out to our team in Telemundo Deportes. <laughs> the amount of preparation, the amount of preparation, the amount of homework, the amount of hours that we spent Uh, actually telling these stories that I'm speaking about, um, it's huge. So, ojalá que no lo podamos gozar todos desde, desde nuestro punto y desde nuestra perspectiva. Totalmente de acuerdo. Y que viva el espíritu olímpico. Dani, what is your message to everyone in search of an Olympic dream? Um, 
My message to everyone in search of an Olympic dream is to not forget why you started and to remember the little girl that was inspired by another Olympian or another athlete that made you want to go after that dream. I'd say to just go back to that, remember why you love it, don't forget why you started to do this, and just come back to that. I think when the, when the day gets tough, it's, it's hard to find inspiration, but remember you were inspired at one point and you wanted this more than you wanted to breathe. So just come back. <laughs> come back to come back to that little girl. Very beautiful. And Danny, uh, speaking of dreams, not only are you an inspiration for young Latinas around the world as a 22 year old Olympian, but you also have a huge fan base here at Telemundo, let me tell you. Uh, starting with your dad, senior news producer Fernando Ramirez, <laughs> as well as your sister Denise Ramirez, who happens to be our backstage editor. So at this time, everyone, please welcome Denise Ramirez to the podcast. Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. It's so cool to be on the side of the mic and also share this space with my sister. How cool, how cool of a job that I have, right? Absolutely. And just for context for all of our listeners out there, Denise is usually behind the scenes in the audio room, making sure our episodes sound flawless, along with our audio operator, Hector Vargas. Shout out to you too, Hector. Uh, But today, Denise, we thought you'd join the convo because you also have a beautiful story. Uh, Before joining Telemundo, you were also a former swimmer who aspired to make it to the Olympics. So I wanted you to share a little bit about your journey and what inspired you to encourage your sister to take up synchronized swimming. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, actually, like she said, I didn't have to encourage her. She was like just the little sister that followed me around everywhere. (laughs) Um, And she was like my shadow. And you know what? That eventually led her to the pool. It was our second home. So and and she also mentioned it that it's a family tradition, right? It actually started with my grandma on my mom's side. She swam what it used to be called water ballet. So it's a lot different than what the sport is now. But it used to be, you know, just floating around. And I think there's Esther William videos, like uh, uh, movies that they made of water ballet. And and it's just a completely different sport into what it's evolved into now. And then eventually led to my mom as well. She swam for the Venezuelan national team for, I'm not sure how many years, but she swam for, for a while for the Venezuelan national team. And she wanted to continue that tradition with us. And I swam for a long time. I swam up until uh, my college years. And my sister followed in suit. And we're just so, so proud of her. And having that tradition, I don't think it was intentional, but it, you know, it came to life. And it definitely paid off. Isn't that right, Daniela? Oh, yeah, it did. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Daniela now having reached this goal what do you want your sister to know as you head to Paris um I just want Denise to know how much of an inspiration she is to me um how much her support means to me and how much I love her and every single time I wave at the camera or wave to the stands it's always going to be to her and to mom and dad and I'm really grateful <laughs> this is audio, but I promise I wouldn't cry and I'm like on the verge of tears. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Very beautiful. And Denise, Roberto, Isa, to wrap, any final wishes for Daniela as she prepares to go for the gold? Denise, you want to take it? Sure. Um, you, I tell it to her, you know, all the time, but leave it all in the pool. It's you against you. You already know what to do and, and just go get it. Get it done. Very beautiful. Roberto? Yeah, I, look, I just want to wish you all the best in Paris. I know I know, you and your teammates are working hard to compete. We look forward to your event on August 7th for the finals. Um, you should be making, um, you should be very proud of, of the team, of representing the USA and, and, of, and of your community. Um, and, and remember, uh, once an Olympian, always an Olympian. I, I wish you... Nothing but the best. Uh, Go for that gold and and congratulations, uh, Daniela. Daniela, yo quiero decirte que, bueno, ya ya lo dije, pero que te lo goces muchos éxitos. De verdad, te vamos a estar siguiendo. Todo el equipo va a estar haciéndote fuerza para que te lleves esa medalla de oro, para que hagas feliz a tu familia y a todos los latinos que seguimos tu carrera y que la vamos a seguir aún más desde hoy. Un abrazo muy grande, muchos éxitos y felicidades otra vez. Ya ganaste yendo a los Olímpicos, pero estoy segura que que vas a ganar aún más y que nos vas a llenar a todos de un orgullo más grande que el que sentimos en este momento. 
Muchísimas gracias. I'm I'm so I'm so grateful that you guys are so supportive and and Isa, thank you so much for for por todo. Like you really inspired me to keep going and and hearing about your injuries has really made me feel better about some of the pain that I'm feeling today. And Roberto, I'm I'm really really excited to see the things you do with um our broadcast. If you're going to give us a special shout out or not, but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> For sure. And then Denise, you know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Daniela, you heard it. We're all here rooting for you. Best of luck in Paris as you go for the gold. Y vamos con todo. And with that, I want to thank you all for being with us here today and for sharing your stories on the road to the Paris Olympics. Y para todos nuestros oyentes, déjenos saber su opinión sobre este episodio en los comentarios. Y no olviden suscribirse a nuestro canal de YouTube, a Backstage con Telemundo, y de seguirnos en Apple y Spotify. Que comiencen los juegos y hasta la próxima. 